Say you want something bigger, better, and flamier. Well, I've got something for you, and it comes in the form of Dragon's Breath Ammo, a fucking flamethrower shotgun. Oh, it feels good. G'day, guys. My name's Josh. You can call me Zawoodle, and welcome back to 7 Days to Die Alpha 17. Once again, we're after a very, very long time. This it feels like a very, very long time. I am back in Zawoodle Park. It's been so long since I've been back here. Like, all, all the tests and stuff I've done here, the buildings I've built, everything that I've done here, I've, I've left it for a while, and I've missed it. So I've come back for a very special occasion, because you may remember a long time ago, I made an episode with a bunch of weapons mods and more particularly with a weapons, a weapons mod that you could pull out a freaking chain gun or a minigun and just decimate zombie hordes with several spinning barrels of glory now that was that mod and that was a long time ago but since then Maik, the guy who made that mod and so i've since been uh working with him since then uh he has come out with a new weapons mod and it is so so freaking cool because there is just an insane amount of weapons here there's 50 weapons uh, at least 50 might be more than 50 i don't know i gave up counting after a certain amount of time look at them you've got everything you've got custom pistols you've got smgs you've got shotguns you've got assault rifles you've got actual rifles sniper rifles lmgs a bunch of different ammos you've got everything so i have gone through uh that list and i've chosen out a couple of my favorites and put them in these boxes over here so i can showcase them to you so as with all of mayx mods this mod is completely self-contained it uh, works unto itself whatever the fun pimps decide to do with seven days to die in the future whether they change all their item codes or their items in general or whatever they do doesn't matter this mod will still work as long as it's still alpha 17 or whatever alpha it's designed for which is one of the best things about max mods which is why i use them when i do want to mod the shit out of seven days to die but because it is all self-contained it has its own crafting table so you've got this one over here you've got a milling machine and you've also got a lathe and they both do two different jobs just like the melee uh, uh, weapons mod where you have like the forge and that kind of stuff these ones are the same kind of idea so the lathe is where you actually make all your guns so you can see all the guns through there a couple of different attachments and stuff as well which is all nice and lovely but then in the milling machine is where you build your ammo so you've got two different crafting benches just like last time to do two different jobs man that is a nostalgia trip and a half for the first time in a very long time there are targets once again at the firing range that's a trip down memory lane and a half so with them there and with all the explanation of the workbenches over it is time without much further ado to actually start testing some of the weapons or showcasing some of the weapons rather i'm not really testing them i know they work i'm just going to show you guys some of the cool things that you can do so i have a usp because i wanted some metal gear solid vibes up in here it's been a long time since i played metal gear solid I've only ever seen a USP in Metal Gear Solid. I assume it's a real gun. I don't know, but I saw it. I liked it, so here it is. I also have a Deagle, because who in their right mind doesn't love a Deagle? The old 50 cal handgun. I also have a flintlock pistol and the classic M1911. So those are the pistols I've chosen to show off a little bit. But the coolest thing about this mod, what I think is the coolest thing, especially for regular people who may not, not be, you know, fully uh, in or have in-depth knowledge about firearms and ammunitions and all that kind of stuff, is if you go to my little ammo box here and take all the different ammos, you can see I've got a whole bunch of it. But if you look down in the bottom right-hand corner, say you picked up this gun and you're like, man, I don't know what ammo this takes because I don't have experience with firearms. I don't know what calibers go in different handguns. Like me, for example, I know a 7.62 goes into the AK-47. I mean, sure, it's the Russian version of the 7.62, but I can see that and I understand the different calibers and how they work. Work. but a regular person might not know the difference between different calibers so with this you go i need ammo for my deagle and you look down the bottom right hand corner and you see a, a big red number 50 so you go to your ammo and you look through and you go where is the 50 and you go oh i have 250 so you look back down again it looks like a short little stubby one that looks too long that looks short and stubby so you know at, at an easy glance the different kinds of ammo so now that i've got that explained as well let's go fuck up some of these zombies like for example arlene 
I'll spoil Darlene in next to her best friend, Cowboy. They want to be together, I'll put them together forever. Oh, you can never, ever forgive them. If you don't know why, you should go watch the Impossible Mode video. She's betrayed me once, I tried to forgive her. I tried my best. Then she betrayed me again, and I'm not actually sure if that episode comes out before or after this one. So there you go. Maybe that's a spoiler. Maybe you already know. But either way, I can never trust Arlene ever again. So Arlene, I'm sorry. It's been fun, but I can't ever forgive you for the second transgression. Ah! <laughs> oh, it's always satisfying when I do a backflip. Did a surprising amount of damage as well. What kind of damage are these things doing? 42 range damage like in 1911. Uh, 11 for the flip long. That's not very much at all. The Deagle does 82. Oh, I'm excited to shoot some Jack with the Deagle. And the USP does 21. So I started with the 1911, which actually does a fair amount. You know what? You were together in that shed. You could be together in getting killed by the same firearm. Two zombies with the same gun. Fuck you, Biff. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Oh, that just feels good. <gasps> you survived. Well, you're not going to survive that. Fuck you, cowboy. I'm going to save the bigger and beefier guns for these bigger, tougher Jeffries down here. But I had the flintlock pistol, and the first thing I noticed is it's rather hard to aim the old flintlock. This is really one of those kind of just like, I assume I'm going to shoot in this direction somewhere. So you close your eyes and you pull the trigger. But we're going to be okay. We're going to try. We're going to try and aim. I assume it's the top of the little... Like the, the, the little knob in the back. Once again, <laughs> weirdly, I'm aiming with the tip of the knob that's in my hand. You can, you can take from that whatever you want. All right, let's just go like... I completely missed. I completely shot way over the top. Oh, it really is. So if you look at where the crosshairs are, if I aim it up with the target there, my target is roughly on the yellow dot. And I aim, uh, aim down the sights. I'm aiming well, well below. Well, that makes it rather hard to aim. Oh, but it does a lot. Are you dead? I hope oh, that, that felt good. Is this like, is this a shotgun? Is this just, is this just running around like a handheld shotgun, like a hand cannon shotgun? I think it is. You saw some blood and some dirt. That's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, you know what? I actually really kind of like the blunderbuss. That's wicked. Give the USP a bit of a try out. How you doing? Yeah, it doesn't, that doesn't do much, does it? This is kind of like, it feels like a, a last resort kind of pistol. I mean, I'm not going to whip this out uh, and think that I've got any sort of chance of coming up against a horde and be able to take it down. Are you dead? Yeah, I think you're dead. It, 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 like, the sound doesn't feel like it's got a kick. The damage feels like it doesn't have a kick. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a letdown as such, but like, it's not going to be my first choice, is it? But you know what is going to be my first choice? This big bad motherfucker here. Look at it. Look at it. Who? <laughs> that thing is a cannon and a half. So, the Deagle. What are you going to do to a cop? Oh! <laughs> fucking obliterate him is what? Fuck, that was good. All right, what, what about the old mate Yeti? Oh, they go flying. They go flying and I fucking adore it. Are you dead? No? How about now? No? How about, how about now? Surely. I painted your green body across the wall. Surely you're gone. I'm going to put my guns away in their rifle spots in the gun safe. Because like Jim Jeffrey said, oh, I'm a responsible gun owner. Oh, I keep my guns locked in a safe. <laughs> Man, I still can't believe... I can't believe I got the calibers mixed up in MP5. Please forgive me. I know it's basic for a lot of you. I just got confused inside my own head, which is a dangerous place to be at the best of times. So I'm sorry... I'm sorry, please don't kill me in the comments. But moving on from the SMGs, onto the shotguns. Now, if you didn't know, one of my all-time favorite games, in fact, maybe even the all-time favorite game of my entire gaming life, has been Doom. Running around with the super shotgun, blowing away the hordes of hell, is some of the best memories I have. So in lieu of having an actual super shotgun, I have the age-old classic Double Barrel Shotty. But right there with it, another one of my favorite games is Fallout. So I have the shotgun from Fallout. I love that there's little, like, throw back to other games throughout this mod. That's one of my favorite things. It's like little like meta like gaming mod stuff. It's the best. I also have a hunting shotgun because, you know, why wouldn't I? And I also have a sword off shotgun. Now, the reason I have the hunting shotgun and the double barrel shotgun is because you would think in the apocalypse, the easiest gun to find would be a double barrel shotgun. Even if there's an apocalypse in Australia, I could probably still find a double barrel shotgun pretty goddamn quickly because every farmer out there is packing one of these things. And because every farmer is packing one of these things, one barrel is going to be for you, since you love farmers so fucking much, both ends of you do, and the other barrel is going to be for you, seeing as it's basically your gun. So, just line you up and take a couple steps back because we need to actually test it for a bit of range and boom! Are you dead? Are you dead? Did you die? Are you dead? 
Hey, Sanka, you dead? Yeah, he looks pretty dead. Fuck, my, uh, my wall at the back. Also, a concrete wall is a horrible idea for a backstop for a range. That would never be a good idea. But it's getting pretty peppered. The other barrel, you saw your hubby get blown away, so that's yours gonna get blown away too. Oh, I wanted that one to be close. I wanted that one to be close and personal. I wanted to her to feel my betrayal. We do have to check, though, the reload animation of the dubsy. What do you do? Oh, clever. Look, it does actually have, like, the broken barrel animation. Like, he still loads the shells in the bottom. That's the seven days animation. The actual gun itself breaks, and you put the shells in the top. So that's good. Good to know that it's actually got the right thing. Right, let's move on to the fallout shotgun. It looks good. I like the look of it. It's got some sights. All right, the sights don't kind of uh, line up, but that's okay. You just use the front sight. Take a couple steps back, and boom! Oh, that felt just as satisfying. That felt really good. What about you, Soldier Jeffrey? Well then, I was not expecting to take his head clean off, but I'm happy that it did. Four Jeffreys left and two shotguns to try out. So, two for each of you. This is a semi-auto hunting shotgun. I mean, so the normal shotgun in seven days is the pump action, obviously. Ooh, I felt good. But this one, I mean, he still pumps, but you don't actually need to pump it. Let me just uh, line up from a bit of distance as well. Just go like that. Oh, fuck. You, you did a fair amount of damage on that one. You knocked him down. Fuck, I missed that one. There we go. If you can put a white down in two shots, I'm pretty happy. In fact, what kind of damage does this thing do? Uh, 12 and 12 and 12 and 12. Okay, that's probably down to the actual rounds instead of the uh, the gun itself. But I want to know, if I don't have to pump this thing... Yeah, you can just, you can just keep going. And I've, actually, I want to know, does that shoot faster than the regular shotgun? I pull an old shotgun out of the creative menu and just go... Oh, it's about the same. Oh. That's got a nice sound to it, though, when it's finished. Yeah, it feels about the same. Okay, that's all right. Moving on from that to the tiny little pump action. Look at it. It's so small and tiny. It's adorable. Look at the little bad boy. He's not holding, holding it by the front grip. And there's a shell all the way out here, but that's okay. The model is still to be updated by the time you guys get your hands on this. This is like an early access version of the kind of thing. So I can release this when the mod gets released. So let's try out the sauna shotgun. Oh, yeah, it's much louder, as it would be. What about you, big boy? How are you feeling today? Oh, I missed. There we go. Is it actually, is it, is it lined up how it should be? Let's see, right about in the center. Nah, no, see, it's the same as the flintlock. You need to think, like, the model's shorter, but the shotgun itself is longer. So where the front sight would be for the actual uh, hunting shotgun, right, right about there, is where, like, the ghost end of the shock, uh, the sawn off is. So, like, it's like when people get, like, uh, amputated. They have, like, the ghost limb. The shotgun has a ghost nose. Moving up into the actual rifles now, we've got two, like, World War II rifles and two modern rifles. So, we have the M1 Garand. I mean, it's the quintessential long rifle from World War II. I mean, well, there's a bunch of them. Like, the Lee Enfield and the Mosin Nagant stuff like that. And speaking of the Mosin Nagant, there is a uh, Mosin Nagant. But, yeah, like, uh, especially Yanks out there, when I think of World War II, they think of a guy dressed in green carrying an M1 Garand. So, I have... One of those is one very important thing which you already are thinking is something I want to test with that and see if it's there. There's also the modern version of the standard military rifle, the M4A1 and the SCAR. So, a bunch of different rifles to test, a bunch of different things to do. I need to spawn in my zombie targets again and get a shooting. So, given that these are, like, actual rifles and should have a bit of range to them, I wanna, I'm actually going to stand on the balcony up here and see what kind of damage they can do from a bit of distance. I mean, sure, this isn't actually that much difference, but, I mean, it's, it's better than standing up close and personal because everything's going to die from point blank. What do you do? Ah. Uh. Oh, it sounds good that it took a head off. And I got the, you can see down the bottom left, the sniper scope uh, perk. So this must count as a sniper rifle, but the sound of it. Oh, and the effect of it. And just they're flipping around as they lose their heads because I took it off with them going M1 Garand. That is a good feeling for anyone. But the most important part of an M1 Garand is the sound of the en blanc clip as you unload the last round. Does it automatically pop out and does it make the appropriate noise? In the first weapons mod, ow, I just fell off my freaking balcony. What the shit is the point of the rails if I just fall out of it every now and again? Uh, anyway, yeah, the, in the first weapons mod I did, it didn't have that sound effect. I remember telling Mike at the time, I'm like, dude, what the fuck? It's an M1 Garand, you need to have it. So does it have it? Now. Oh, it has it now. Oh, that 
feels good. I love that sound. It sounds so cool. So moving from one World War II long arm to another, the Mosin Negant, which you should be reasonably familiar with. I mean, there's a whole fucking lot of them out there. I mean, credit where credit's due, isn't that bad of a rifle, to be fair. I mean, a lot of them were cranked out by the Russians, so some of them were probably with ship. But I mean, the ones that I've seen have been pretty bloody good. So the Mosin Negant. Oh, God. Aiming's a little bit interesting. He really is like deep throating that rifle to get his head in that position. It's like it's halfway through the rail that's in front of the breach. That's uh, you know what? I'm not even mad. I'm impressed. That's a pretty good effort. So the front sight, I hope at least, does line up. Let's get you right here and go. Boom! Oh, it feels good. It feels good. It feels like it does some damage. I mean, it is a Yeti, and Yetis are pretty hard to kill. Do oh, we killed him in two though. Kill him in two, which is a good thing. But the thing I did want to test with the Mosin the Gant is can I bang a scope on top of it? Because if you've seen Enemy at the Gates or you've heard of Vasily Zaitsev or any of the famous Russian snipers, you know they used the Mosin the Gant and they had their own proprietary scope for the Mosin, which I got, went on that little rail that my old mate here is trying to deep throat to aim with. So can I, I mean, I can put that on there. In fact, let's just quickly re re reload that because every time I modify the guns, I always forget to reload afterwards. Probably could have put on like a four times scope, but whatever. It'll do the job. Oh, and it feels good too. It does feel like a good gun. You know what? If I had this in the zombie apocalypse, I wouldn't be upset. From the Mosin and the 1940s, we move up into the 90s and beyond with the M4, the modern M4. God, those uh, sight posts are really quite tall, aren't they? I assume this is going to be like a fully auto. Yeah, I mean, it's shooting a 5.56. It's not going to do the same kind of damage as the 30 or 6 that... Wait, does it? You fucking obliterated the white, and whites are hard to kill. Wow, this thing really does fucking pepper him too. What are you doing out there? 42 damage. Oh uh, yeah, so not as much as the bigger calibers of the uh, the Second World War when they're running with 30 got sixes and shit like that. Um, but 42 is still quite a lot. I'm actually pretty impressed with how stable it was. It's stable, it shoots reasonably quick. It's a fucking good gun, actually. All right, but going on to the SCAR, which is a 308 uh, assault rifle with a terrible sight picture. Whenever I've played with a with a, a SCAR in any game ever, that rear post sight is just fucking atrocious. The peripheral vision on it is terrible, but can it kill a cop for me? N no? Okay, are you doing... Are you doing less damage than the the M4 was? It feels like you are. Doesn't feel nearly as meaty. Doesn't feel nearly as impressive. That's a bit of a letdown, actually. You know what? I wouldn't. If I had to choose between, I wouldn't choose the Scar. What are you pumping out there? 42 and 42. Maybe it's the 5.56 version of the Scar. Moving on from the rifles, we're moving up to the proper sniper rifles, where I have, a, I think it's a Macmillan, an M98, and of course the big Barrett. 50 cal, the big boy, the one that everyone thinks of when they think big anti-material rifles is the big Barrett. But I'm not going to shoot that one just yet. I am going to shoot, I think I think it's a Macmillan. It looks like a Macmillan, I don't know. Someone who knows better than me, please come and correct me and tell me what it is because I, I just don't know off the top of my head. I've gone ahead and I've put an 8x scope on this. It doesn't come with a scope as standard. You have to find one if you wanted to use it, just like the marksman rifle in the game itself. But you can see I haven't put any zombies down in my actual pens. I've put them all the way out there on top of the other barriers out there because it's a sniper rifle after all. There's no point shooting a sniper rifle point blank. It kind of defeats the purpose. I'm going to crouch down here. If I had a bipod, I'd rest it on this little concrete sill and let's nail some fucking zombies. This is 3 through 8 Lapua as well. I don't have an Arctic Warfare. My favorite sniper rifle is the Arctic Warfare, the AI. And it's just, it's just, it's just sexy. But uh, whatever, you know, I don't have one of those. So I have to make do with the other awesome rifle. So with 3 through 8, 3, 3, 8, this should do some serious damage. I mean, I've got the sneak damage. Sneak damage times 4 and he's still got up. How about fucking not, buddy? Surely he's dead now. If he isn't dead, I can't see him. Arlene? Yep, yeah, I see you all over there. You know, let's take off sneak damage. Let's just shoot him properly like normal. Oh, wait for it, wait for it. Boom! Yes, feels good. Does feel good. I feel like I'm actually doing some damage all the way out there. And last but not least, the puppy. Oh my god! <laughs> Oh, that felt good! I just realized as well, shooting this thing outside of aiming is the, the bolt actually has an animation to it, which is nice. But also, if I reload, there has an animation for the reload as well. The magazine comes out and goes back in where it should, which is nice and lovely. But, so the Macmillan, or whatever it is, is a pretty good rifle. I like it. The 3 threat actually, what, what, what's the damage like on that thing? In 338, three, 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 so it's 68 damage. So like the M1 Grand 
is doing more damage. That's uh, okay. Uh, but the 50 cal, as you'd expect, is pushing down 85 damage worth of lead. Whew, that's a lot. But the cool thing is, it comes with a scope already attached. And it's an adjustable scope too. Oh, that's some sexy smexy right there. Let's get the nurse lined up on the outside. Oh, man. It sounded big. It was big. I took her head clean off. You know what? You know what, cowboy dick bag? I'm going to take off your dick. I'm going to take off Arlene's favorite part of you so she can't enjoy you like she won't enjoy me anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you know what? Fuck you too, Arlene. Ah! Oh, I feel so good. I've left old matey Patady White out there still alive up on the top of the wall for me to shoot a different way because you can see with the Barrett that the scope itself actually works as a scope when you're not actually aiming. I mean, if you have a hold of the rifle like that in real life, I know you wouldn't actually get a sight picture. I know that, but I would love it if that was how scopes worked in the game. Like, we look down a scope like this, this is what a scope looks like. This is how it looks like in a game where they black out the rest of it. What you look like when you look down a scope is like this. You have the scope in the center, which is all zoomed in, and you still have all your peripheral vision. So I'd love it if that was how the scopes actually worked, but I'm gonna try and use that to kind of no scope, but also still scope uh, the white all the way out there. So let's get you lined up. Let's see if I can get a line up with a headshot. You're almost there. Oh, that's about perfect. Just like let him lean into it. Come on, easy, easy. Oh, fuck it, over here now. Come, uh, that, that, there we go. Come on, get in the sight. Get in there, lean over. Come on, buddy, that'll do. Boom! No. No, it doesn't work. You can't no scope with a scope. That's upsetting. But I can still actual scope. Oh, I do some serious damage. Man, I just want to go shoot a barrel at a range now. That's awesome. So we've done a selection of what I would call like actual guns. But now we're moving on to like special guns. In which case is the chain gun, which I know I've done before. But I want to see if the new chain gun is any different or if it's still the same as the last one. But we're going to find out that by shooting it a whole bunch. And also a hand cannon, which is very, very cool because basically it is a pistol grenade launcher. Just what you thought you needed in the apocalypse. The ability to throw some explosives around at range at will. And you can probably hear a little bit of moaning going on. And there's moaning going on because downstairs, just down here in my bedroom, is one of the worst sights you'll ever see in your life. Yep. Just what we all are expecting. Arlene, true to her ways, she decided the two cowboys wasn't enough for her. And the second helping she had later on in GFM8 mode was enough for her. So now, she's just gone like full Brazzers level, surrounded by a sea of cowboys, just getting the job done on my fucking bed. And you know what I'm not going to fucking stand for? Well, well, that, clearly. So, what better way to test out a grenade launcher than taking out the slutty Arlene and all of her sausagey cowboy friends in one fell swoop. So, Arlene, it has been a pleasure, but consider this me breaking up with you. That didn't do fucking shit all. Well, if the handheld grenade launcher won't do it, what about, like, a proper, like, actual grenade launcher? Oh, where's that aiming? You know what? Just let's go hip fire from the back. Up. Oh. Oh boy! That was the that was the reaction I was hoping for. Whoo! That did some damage. It destroyed my bed, but it also destroyed Arlene and all her cowboy friends, so I'm okay with that. We all know there is only one way to test a minigun, and that is with a whole horde of farmers. So let's get myself up and ready. Let's enable their AI so they all come for me. Come on, buddy. Yeah, oh, they're fighting themselves. No, that they're broken through. Oh yes. Oh, it's just as good as last time. It still feels far it feels like firing God's dick. Decapitating zombies left and right. Oh, it's good. I could do this all fucking day. My ears probably can't do it, but I could do it. I'm having a great time with this. That's the last of them. They're all done. There's a oh no, they're still alive. You dead now? Okay, good. There's a sea of bodies. There's so many bodies that have started disappearing. Oh, that was satisfying. It was just as satisfying as last time. I love it. So you may be looking through that chest and thinking that that's probably about it for guns. You may be thinking, hey, I never actually tested out any of the sights that Make has put in. And you would be wrong because you may have also been wondering what is in this rusty little box over here. Just like all the times I do these mod showcases, I leave what I think is the coolest thing for last in a separate little box as a surprise. Although in this case, it's probably in the thumbnail. I'm not sure. But this is what we've been waiting for 
a Spaz 12 with a bunch of attachments on it, and also a bunch of different rounds, because as a, look at that, that just looks fucking sexy. As a part of Mayix mod, he's given us different special rounds to fire down range at different zombie targets. So, for example, the first one that I'm going to show you is this one, just a standard 20 gauge shotgun round. Nothing, nothing too special, it's just a shotgun round. See? Does a lot of damage. Feels nice to shoot. You just cruise through and just decapitate zombies left, right, and center as much as you like. But say that just straight decapitation isn't really your style. Say you want something bigger, better, and flamier. Well, I've got something for you, and it comes in the form of Dragon's Breath Ammo, a fucking flamethrower shotgun. Oh, it feels good! You can just line them all up. Like candles on a dark night, make them beacons to the other zombies if this is what happens when you attack my base and let them burn to death. But we all know that fire doesn't do as much damage as we kind of like. And that's just through seven days. I mean, fire is pretty fucking dangerous. If you're on fire for this long, you're probably going to die. But seeing as they don't, we have another option. Something a little bit better. And that is an electric shell. So say you're over in the corner over here. The zombies are getting a bit close. And you're starting to freak out just a little bit. You can sit back and just... Oh, they, they run a bit slowly when they're on fire. You can fucking electrocute their asses and stop them dead in their tracks. Make it easy if you're going to kill them. No more electric fences. Electric fucking shotguns. Last one. She's getting zapped to all hell. Standing perfectly still. Oh, nice try. Nice try. You tried to take a swing and instead you lost your noggin. Oh, man. It just feels good. I love this shit. I love what people can do with cool games. I love the modding communities because they always come up like all the shit that I think would be cool. Someone else has already thought of and they give the, me the ability to come in and just fuck shit up. Oh, it's good. What a fucking day. As always, we need to end the video with the hero shot of my guy with his fire and electricity spinning Spaz 12. Not to mention the lead. I mean, it's just, it's just a killing machine and it's great. So I do need to mention though, with this mod, it will be out by the time this video comes out. So there should be a link down in the description and in the pinned comment. Make sure you look out for mate's comments in the comments as well, because he's often down there answering questions and that kind of stuff. But if you want this mod, there is a little bit of work done to actually get it to work properly. For example, you can craft these weapons, but you can also pick them up in drops and in looting and that kind of stuff. So it's an actual proper addition to the game, which means there is a couple of steps you have to go through. You're like still just like, you know, adjusting files and stuff like that. Nothing too complex, but please, please read the readme. Please read the explanation, the install instructions. Because if you come into my comment section and be like, I don't know how to install it. It's not working. I'm just going to tell you to read the fucking read me because that's what you need to do. If you're not going to go through the effort to actually read how to install the mod you want, then you're not going to read my comment explaining it either. So read the read me, follow the steps, go to the installed, enjoy this mod because it is fucking fantastic and make sure you throw make some love. But I'll have to come back and play some more 7 Days to Die in another episode because this episode is done. So thank you guys for watching. Most of all, thank you to all the patrons on Patreon who made this episode possible. If you like to make sure the like button down below or subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter. If I don't talk to you there first, I'll see you in the next episode. Have a good one.